Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to the 9 o'clock Sunday morning service. Glad to see each and every one of you here this morning. I know it's uh, sometimes it's a sacrifice to roll out that early. But, uh, hey, we got to sleep in this morning. We didn't have to get up at 3 o'clock. So who does that? But it's great to be here. I want to thank Pastor Derek for the opportunity to teach this morning, kick off this month of godly family. And uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer real quick to uh, help with my nerves. I don't know why I get nervous up here for, for at least the five, first five minutes and then I kind of settle into it. But let's ask God to have his way this morning. Lord, we come before you. We thank you, God, for all your blessings and your benefits in our life. We thank you, God, for allowing us to enter into your home once again, to honor you with our presence, to honor you, Lord, with our praise and our sacrifice. I pray, God, that you would anoint these lips of clay this morning, God, that I might speak something that would be a benefit to someone and to bless this family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to apologize in advance because this particular lesson that I'm speaking about, there's a lot of rabbit holes in it that I could run down because it's the subject matter is so broad. So if I get to chasing a rabbit, somebody just holler rabbit and I'll try to I'll try to <laughs> get back on trail. So if you have your Bibles, you want to follow me along, I'm going to read a lengthy portion of scripture at first from Ephesians chapter five, verses twenty one through thirty three. This is the New Living Translation, so it may not sound like King James Version, but I think we'll be able to understand the verbiage better. And further, submit to one another out of the reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the Savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so the wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, for husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of his body. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery. But it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. And he did not leave the children out. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 4, says, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord, and this is the right thing. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother... Things will go well for you, and you will have a long life on earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Now you realize why there's a lot of rabbits. The order of the home, if they could uh, put that photo up there. Didn't get it? All right, no worries. It, I had a, uh, I don't, I don't think I loaded, downloaded it right for him, but it was an umbrella, a large umbrella, and three smaller umbrellas underneath it. That top umbrella is Christ. It's God. He's the first layer of protection, the first layer of covering for our family. Everything else falls underneath Christ. Falls underneath God. So, and then underneath the. Underneath Christ, underneath God himself, is the Father. The Father is the first layer of protection for the family. The Father's job is to protect her, 
the leader and the provider. That's the way we're built. That's the way we're designed. It's in our DNA. It's, it's, why, it's why our vision is different from that of a woman. When we were created, we were created to be hunters and providers. So we can see things that are 150, 200 yards out with perfect clarity, but we cannot find that pill bottle that our wife said was in the medicine cabinet right in front of our face. Because that's not the way we think. That's not the way we operate. That's not the way our DNA allows us to think. So when she says, it's in the cabinet, and you go in there and say, it's not in the cabinet, and, and you keep shuffling things around and pulling things off the shelf, and she walks in there and walks right up to it and says, there it is. And it was literally right in front of your face. We were on vacation this past year, and we were staying in this nice place, and there was a pantry there, and I said, where's, I don't even remember what I was looking for. What was that? Ziploc bags. I'm looking for Ziploc bags. She, she remembers. So I go to the cabinet. She said, they're in that cabinet on the second shelf. I go to, the, and I'm standing there looking at the second shelf. I mean, I'm honed in on it. And I'm purposely, in my brain, I'm thinking, I'm going to find these Ziploc bags. I'm not going to ask her again where these Ziploc bags are. And I was literally looking at them but I did not see them. She said, babe, they're right there. I said, don't point to them. I want to find them myself. I want to make, I want to pass this test. I want to get through this. But that's the way we're designed. We're different. We are the provider. We're the protector. We see things that are coming. We see things that are far away. We, we watch the perimeter all the time because we're the protector. We're the provider. We're the hunter. We, they, used to, they, used to, they didn't run down to Walmart and pick up groceries. They had to go hunt for their food. And that's the way God designed us. That's the way God built us. We're the protector. We're the leader. We're the first one. The word of God says for the husband to be the first partaker of the fruit. We're the first one. We're the front line of protection. And a lot of times, if we're not careful, this is something that I'm going to be transparent about this morning. I tend to be more of a warrior than a priest follow me. We have to be careful not to just be the warrior, but to also be the priest of the home, the spiritual leader. I've made the mistake of putting my family's protection in front of of their spiritual leadership. This is tough for me to talk about this morning, but it happens. The way I'm geared, the way I'm designed, I'm constantly looking for the danger. I'm constantly, when, when me and my family go somewhere, we go to the mall, we go down, walking down the boulevard, walking down the street, wherever we're at. I don't walk beside my family because I can't see them. I walk one pace behind my family because I can see my family in front of me, but I also, in my peripheral vision, I can see what's coming toward my family. That's the way I'm designed. That's the way I operate. It's not good, maybe, sometimes. It's probably frustrating to my wife because I'm not walking beside her, holding her hand. But that's the way I'm designed. That's the way I'm, I'm the protector. I'm looking for trouble. I'm looking for something that's going to come against my family. I want to be the first one to see it. I want to sit in the restaurant with my back to the wall and see who comes through that door over there. Is it gonna, I, when, when they walk in, when someone walks in, I look. I give them about a three-second analysis. Good, bad, questionable. It's the way I'm designed. Can't help it. Can't help it. I've tried to change. I can't change. If I sit with my back to the door in a restaurant, I'll turn in my seat, and I'm constantly distracted. I'm the protector. But sometimes they don't need protected. They need led. And if we're not careful, we'll be doing what we think is the best thing for our family. And we'll neglect other parts of it, other areas of it. So we have to be careful. We have to pray. We have to have God to allow us to find that happy medium, that place where we can both be the protector and the priest of your home. 
And, you know, thank God for a, a good woman that has my back, that is not afraid of me to the point to where she won't call me out when I'm erring on the side of caution. She brought this up to me. Here in the church, I'm constantly looking around. I'm not staring at you. I'm watching the doors. I'm looking because I've been in situations and scenarios where the church was in danger. And so, man, when that door opens, I'm looking. Who just came in? Who just went out? And I analyze it. The warrior in me wants to protect. But here lately, when it's not my time to be on the security team or be on in the hallway patrolling or being the usher, I'm thinking, I got good men that's got my back. I'm going to worship God this morning. I'm going to praise God with everything that is in me because I got children that are coming up, and they need to know that dad is more than just a fighter. He's a worshiper. He's the one that's out in the middle of the aisle with his hands raised, worshiping God and praising God and giving God glory for what he's done in his life. Y'all bear with me this morning. I'll get through this. First Peter 1 and 7. In the same way, ye husbands must give honor to your wives. Y'all fasten your seatbelts, men. Ladies, get with me. Treat your wife with the understanding as you live with an un, with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. Okay, let me ask you something. How valuable do you think your wife is to God that he himself will stop your prayers if you don't treat her the right way? The Almighty himself will shut down the heavens on your prayers if you're not treating mama the right way. Now, I'm old school, southern gentleman. And I will open the door for you whether you want me to or not, lady. I don't care. We were raised. My dad, he would, I'm sorry about that. My dad put my, my mother way up here on a pedestal. Boy, don't you talk, don't you talk, don't you look at your mama like that. Now, I had a problem with that because as a young child, my dad, when he, when he would discipline you, when he would talk to you, he wanted you to look at him. Boy, you look at me when I'm talking to you. You know, when a little four-year-old kid, you know how they are. They're always wanting to look down at the floor. But Dad, he wanted you to look him in the eye. Well, at about six years old, Brother Atkins, I got to where I could look him in the eye. But it wasn't a good kind of look for him. Then he said, boy, don't you glare at me when I'm talking to you. And he didn't want me glaring at mama when she was talking because there was a level of respect that our dad had for our mother. And he always made sure that anybody in his house wasn't going to talk to his wife in that tone of voice. Now, when you get teenage sons, she had three. I had one. And I've, got a, I've got another one coming up every once in a while because... As a teenager, we all have to understand these about our children. I'll follow, I'll, this will fall into the message here in a little bit. But when those boys get 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, they're trying to embrace their manhood. And when their mother speaks to them in a certain tone, it goes against the ingrained DNA of them that when you get pushed up against, Brother Doobie, you may, naturally, you want to swell up. want to go back against it. So every once in a while, when the frustration of being corrected or, or squabbling with his sibling or going back and forth comes out of his mouth directed at his mother, I have to say, hey, boy, you watch the bass in your voice when you're talking to my wife like that. Because I want him to respect 
his mother. And then if he respects his mother and sees me respecting his mother, the godly home, then he will respect his wife. It will be in his memory. I'm going to tell this real quick. When Jamie and I first got married, she would cook a great meal, and I would go through the kitchen, and Lincoln was, what, seven maybe? Lincoln was a little bitty guy. I'd go through the kitchen. She'd be standing there by the stove, and I, I'd pat her on the backside. And I'd say, that's a good meal, babe. Well, Lincoln observed this gesture. <coughs> So he comes strolling through the kitchen after dinner one night. He said, good meal, mama. So you got to be careful what you do in front of your seven-year-old kids because they pick up on these things. And so we've always laughed about that. But, hey, you got you to let those children see the respect level that you have for your wife. You know, For God to shut down the heavens on your prayers, that's heavy. It makes me stop and pause and think. Now, I've never had a problem with knowing how to treat my wife. Sometimes they're hard to understand. You know, Paul said live with them in understanding. Sometimes that evades me. You know, I mean, just I don't understand what's going on. don't know what the deal is. you got to communicate with them. you got to tell me. what. I can't read your mind. you got to say something. You know, we're encouraged, we men are encouraged to talk about our feelings, but we tend to shy away from that because when we open ourselves up, we feel vulnerable. And as, as a masculine man, we don't want to feel vulnerable about anything. We want to be on guard. We want to be protected. We want to be keep everything inside, and we don't share how we really feel. But sometimes you've got to open up to the woman you love And ladies, let me add this. When he does that, create a safe zone for him. Do not use that against him at a later date because if you do, he will never open up to you again. He will shut down. And all you'll get is the man that goes to work, come home, puts the paycheck in the bank, goes to work, come home, puts the paycheck in the bank. He will not want to be that vulnerable again. He will know that if I say something, it's going to be used against me at a later date. I'm going to plead the fifth on this. So you have to be cautious. You have to allow that man a safe place. And my wife is excellent at this. I have talked to her. She knows how to just listen. And when I'm done, I know it's never going to come up again unless I bring it up because she respects me. I got the best wife in the church. I'm just going to tell you that. I don't know what you guys are going to do about it, but. But I don't want my prayers to be hindered by the way I treat my wife. Communicate with her. Let her know, hey, I'm open. I want to say this. Here's how I feel. Here's what's going on in my mind. How do you feel about this? What are your thoughts on this? Understand that they're not dummies. They're just as smart as we are, sometimes smarter. I know my wife is smarter than me. There's no doubt about it. Ask anybody that knows us. There's times when we're talking, and I know I'm well, I'm, and I look at her and say, I'm just going to shut up because I know what I'm saying is plumb ignorant and stupid, and you're looking at me like, okay, you're rambling. So, but she respects me enough not to call me stupid. She respects me enough not to make me feel inferior to her, even though she has a master's degree and bachelor's degrees and all kinds of degrees, and I've got a 12th grade education. Now, if we're going to talk about building cranes, I can outdo her. You see, everybody's got their strong points. But listen, let me tell you something. You have to respect that woman. She's the weaker vessel. And you've got to be good to her. And don't put your hands on her. This is a pet peeve of mine. God give you that woman to love. Do they need slapping sometimes? Maybe. I'm not saying they don't. Maybe. Do you feel like doing it sometimes? Yes, you do. Because you think in your manly mind, boy, I could slap you so hard right now. But you don't. And you better not. And if you are, let me see if I can put it to you like this. If you are, 
you should stop. If you stop now, that'll be the end of it. But if you do not stop, I have a particular set of skills. A set of skills that I've required, I've acquired over the years. And I will hear about them. And I will find you. And I will put my hands on you. And I may or may not forget to pray. They're made to love, gentlemen. They're not made to abuse. You know, if y'all are having problems to that magnitude, I know a good counselor I can hook y'all up with, and she'll help y'all through some of that stuff. Husbands, Ephesians 5.25 said, Husbands, this means to love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for it. I'd die for mine in a New York minute. If somebody jumps on her, it's going to be bad. I'd give my life for my family gladly. Next is the wife, the second umbrella. The wife, she comforts, she teaches, she nurtures. And she comforts the whole house, even the husband. That's where the comfort is. And look, if you're scared, if you're a kid, you're scared, you want to run to daddy because daddy's the protector. But when you stub your toe, you don't want daddy. His kisses don't heal nothing. But mama has a way of kissing the pain away. Mama has a way of when you're hungry, she can make a meal out of ramen noodles and toast, and it'll taste like something from a five-star restaurant because they have that ability. Now, if you ask me for toast, you're getting straight-up toast, baby. That's it. You might get some butter on it. But mamas have a unique ability to comfort their children, to comfort the family, to nurture them, to teach them. They spend more time with their children. Dad's working. He's off on the job. Mama's at home. Mama's the first one that teaches you how to do your ABCs. Mama's the first one that teaches you your colors and your numbers and all these things and all the pre-K stuff because that's her job. That's her duty. That's how God designed it. Dad's the protector, the provider, the strength. Mama's the comfort. She's the, the teacher, the nurturer. That's the design of the family. And when these roles flip-flop, you start having issues. You start having problems. You start having trouble. You know, it's, the, it's, it's natural for a child to cling to their mother when they're upset. They want their mama. They want their, there's, there's been men on the battlefield when they were dying, calling out for mama. It's ingrained in us to reach for the mother, reach for our mother when we need that comfort. You know, when, when London gets scared, she don't run to mom. Mama ain't going to do nothing. She'll come in there. She'll shake and she'll say, PD, I'm scared. 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night, I've been, been asleep for an hour and a half trying to rest. I don't get mad at her. I'm scared. You know what I do? I say, what do you want, baby? You come lay down with me. Okay. I'll go in there and lay down with her. And I'll lay down with her until she falls asleep. Or if I don't want to go lay down with her, I will say, Go get your pillow and come get in bed with me and mama. And so we wake up with a kid in the, in the middle of us. But that's the comfort, the strength. Ladies, do not belittle your husband in front of your friends or your children. Because what you do is you destroy the respect level that those children have for their dad. And you really make yourself look bad in front of your friends when you start running your husband down. He may be worthless. I'm not saying that they're, everybody's perfect. But by giving life to that statement, your friends see your husband in a different way. And he loses respect. If you've got an issue with your husband... Don't talk to your girlfriends about it. Talk to your husband about it. If that doesn't work, get some confidential counseling. Talk to someone that's not going to go tell their girlfriends everything at the salon. What? Oh, let me tell you what Jamie told me the other day about Anthony. Oh, my God, guys, you ain't going to believe this. I know that's never going to happen, but it happens to some people. 
You have to love your husband. You have to respect your husband. You have to allow him that place of authority in your life. Now, if he's doing things that are unbiblical, if he's doing things that are contrary to the word of God, the word of God says they will be won by the chaste conversation of their wives coupled with fear. Now, fear, I believe in that point, meaning respect. So pray for him. Pray that God changes his mind. My wife prays for me constantly. I appreciate it because that's where some strength comes from in my life. I know she has my back. I know she calls my name before God. God, keep him safe. Keep him strong. Give him knowledge and understanding so that he can lead our family. Pray for your husband. Support your husband. Be there for your husband. It's a two-way street being good to one another. When both of you learn each other's love language and you start catering to her needs and she starts catering to your needs and try to outdo one another. See who can do the most for each other. And I'll guarantee you, your relationship will increase tenfold. If you're sitting there, gentlemen, and you're watching your favorite show on TV, you sit there, you thought about it all day, man, they're going to record it tonight and, and, and I'm going to get to sit there and DVR it and fast forward through all the commercials. And you're honed in on it, and you're zoned. You're sitting on the couch. She comes and sits beside you. You don't want to be distracted. Let me tell you what you can do. They make this stuff called foot lotion. You sit on this end of the couch, and she lays her head on that end of the couch down there, and she puts her feet in your lap. And if you don't want her to talk, if you don't want her to speak to you, you just start rubbing her feet, and her eyes will roll back in her head, and she will leave you alone the whole time you're rubbing her feet. I promise you. That's one of Jamie and I's little tricks. I've been rubbing her feet since we got married. She'll come and lay on the couch, put her feet up, and we got to, we keep we keep the foot lotion in a little drawer down in the living room because that's that's the location. That's where I need it. I don't need it upstairs. I need it down here. But she's been on her feet all day long. I've been on my feet all day long. I want to relax. She wants to relax. So we relax together. And she, in that moment, I'm her favorite person in the world. There's no doubt about it. She cannot be mad at me while I'm rubbing her feet. She cannot be upset with me about something when I'm rubbing her feet. So find something that's rewarding for both of you. And do that. And you will be surprised how that the harmony of the home reflects into the harmony of the church. You show me a church that has a group of families in it that have their act together, and I'll show you a church that's prospering. I'll show you a church that's full of love. I'll show you a church that's full of genealogy. I'll show you a church that knows how to nurture newcomers when they come into the house of God because it's a way of life. They know how to make a family, and this is the family of God. And so if we got to get our family at home right so that when we come into the family of God, we bring all those good elements and those good things from the home, and we start to implement it in the house of God, a godly family. The wife... You know, here's the thing. Don't dismiss his viewpoint or opinion just because it's not the way you wanted to do it. I work with a man on the job, and, and one of his favorite sayings is, there's ten ways to do the same job. I don't know if that's true or not, but I know there's different ways to do the same job. There may be a couple of some things, but... but just because we're not doing it Anthony's way doesn't mean that it's not going to get done in a timely fashion and it's not going to get done right. It may not be done in the sequence of order that I want it done, but sometimes you have to tell a man, do the job, and then just step back away and let him have his space. You can't control everything on the job. And ladies, you can't control everything or every movement that your husband makes if he doesn't do it the way you want him to do it. He's sitting there watching football, college football. His favorite football team is on. The trash is in the trash can in the kitchen. It's not overflowing, but the lid won't quite close. You getting the picture? And you go 
and say, hey, can you take the trash out? We know it's our job to take out the trash. No doubt about it. That's pretty much the man's job. My wife does it back and forth. But most men, their job, take out the trash. Right, men? It's your job. Okay. It's fourth quarter. There's 37 seconds left on the clock. They're on the three-yard line. You got no timeouts left. You getting the picture? Can you take out the trash? I will in a minute. I'll just do it myself. Couldn't wait 37 seconds, lady. You couldn't wait till the most important call of this game is fixing to happen. And you want me to stop watching my favorite college team to take out the trash that can wait? And you're mad at him the rest of the evening because he didn't jump when you say jump. You have to understand the scenario, lady. He said he would take it out. Ladies, allow your husband some leeway. He's not one of your kids. I told you to do it, and I mean do it now. I had to use that sometimes. But understand, you have to have some lateral liberties here. You know, just because dinner ain't on the table when you walk through the door, hoss, don't get no attitude. You don't know what she had to put up with today. You don't know the wash machine broke. She had to take 17 loads of laundry to the laundry mat and fight 14 other people for a big dryer. You don't know what she's went through today. You have no idea how many times the kids called her name, Mama, 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 Mama. She's exhausted. She's frustrated. It might be a good night for you just to pick up the phone and call Domino's and say, Baby, I got dinner tonight. So find out what's going on in their life. Before you make a judgment call, what do you do today? Sit around all day? I figured dinner would be ready when I got home. And it just, you just well poured hot grease on her because she ain't going to get no matter. You have to understand and respect each other. You don't know what she went through today. You don't know what happened. You don't know the circumstances. You don't know if the kids might have developed an upset stomach and she had to clean up the house two or three times because of children making messes. You don't understand what she went through. I couldn't deal with three kids. I'm not going to lie to you. My mom had three boys, and we were constantly making messes, running in and out, slamming the doors, tracking in mad. And my mom is OCD, and she actually took a mop handle to my little brother when he walked in on the floor. She said, if you walk in on this floor one more time while I'm mopping, I'm going to whoop you with this mop. He didn't believe her. She did. I got a Polaroid photo of him laying in the floor. Oh, I guess right here after mom whacked him across the middle of the back with a broom handle or the mop handle. So I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. I probably don't have the patience for it. I'm not geared for that. Now, if we want to go referee a football game, I'm all for that. But you don't understand what each other goes through during the day. When he comes through that door, you don't know if his boss has been riding him like a stick horse all day long. You don't know what she's been dealing with. So when you come home, if you want a godly home, come home and feel the atmosphere of the house before you start making statements. Look around and see what's going on. You, you can know. You can know. If the house looks like a total disaster went through it, chances are something happened that day that she didn't get to do her normal routine. Find out respectfully. Don't walk in there. Well, it looks like to me you just sat around all day long. Dude, you asking for it. That's a 15-yard penalty to the couch, and you ain't going to be sleeping in the bedroom tonight. Respect each other. You have to respect your spouse. You have to respect each other. You know, he said Christ loved to treat your wife like Christ loved the church that he gave his life for. That's a high level of respect. That's a high level of love. Children, there's not a lot of kids in here. But their job is to love the parents and obey the parents. And it's our job to teach them how to love each other and how to obey each other. If you want a godly home, you have to follow these guidelines. There's characteristics of a godly home, a godly family. Parents 
should lead by example. Let your children see you and your husband or your husband and your wife, your spouse. Let them see you getting along. Let them see you communicating. Let them see you talking things through. And they will reflect those skills. They will mirror those images that they see. Mom and Dad do it like this, just like Lincoln coming by Mama and patting her on the backside and saying, good meal, Mama. He saw me do that 15 times. He mirrored what he saw. And when they see that love and that affection, you know what? You know where I got it? My dad did it to my mom. Because that's what I've seen over the years. I've seen that love. You know, Jamie's, Jamie's uh, love language is, is acts of service. Man, if I take her car to car wash and clean it up, I'm getting brownie points, boys. Find out what makes your spouse smile. And do those things. Yeah, am I tired sometimes? Do I not feel like it? No, but I have to push myself because I'm trying to please her. And I'm trying to please God. I come to service when I don't feel like it. Why can't I do things for my wife when I don't feel like it? I go to work when I don't feel like it because it's my job. It's my duty. It's your job and your duty to cater to your spouse. You know, gentlemen, listen to me. Boy, I'm... I'm If she works and you work, it's not her place to do all the laundry, to do all the cooking, all the cleaning, take the kids here, take the kids there. We're partners, so be partners. Paul said you're equals. We're on the same level. It's not specifically my job. Hey, I do things at our house that most men, they ain't going to do. But I scrub the toilets. I use them. Why not clean them? I help with the laundry. I get clothes dirty. My, my work clothes, man, they're, they're nasty. There ain't very many people want to wash my work clothes. I fold clothes. I put things up. Me and Jamie both, we share things. Sometimes she vac vacuums the floor. Sometimes I vacuum the floor. Sometimes she mops. Sometimes I mop. Back and forth. Depends on what she's got going on. If she's in the middle of doing something, I don't just go over there and loaf on the couch all day long. No, man, I'll pick up that machine and I'll go to cleaning the floors because I know eventually she'll get her stuff done. I'll have all the other stuff done. Then we can relax together. But I'm not going to sit over and watch Bonanza all day long while she's up vacuuming and cleaning the house and all this. It's not fair, gentlemen. It's not right. She's your helpmate. She's not your servant. I mean, it ain't popular, but it's true. A godly family seeks God. The family that prays together stays together. We heard it. Godly family speaks truth. Tell each other the truth. My daddy used to tell me, son, if you tell me the truth, you won't get in trouble. Did you or did you not shoot that glass filter bowl on the bottom of that H Farm all tractor with the BB gun? It's got a hole in it. There's a BB in the bottom of the bowl. Somebody did it. Was it you? Yeah, Dad, I did it. I was target practicing. The sun was glinting off of it so beautifully. And I thought, that'd be a good target. I didn't get a spanking, but I, I got reprimanded. But tell the truth. Tell each other the truth. Because a woman can tell when you're lying to her the minute you open your mouth. They have an ingrained instinct. God put it in them. He, they know when you, when you, when you, ah, well, here's what, ha here's what happened. I got a little saying I say to Jamie sometimes. Look, I ain't lying this time. Here's what happened. <laughs> tell the truth. And by telling the truth to each other, you, you'll train your children to tell the truth. You'll create a safe zone. Say, son, if you tell me, my dad would say, son, if you tell me the truth, I won't, I won't whoop you. All right, here's what happened, dad. Bill hit me first. And we go from there. Tell the truth. A family that shows, a godly family shows unconditional love in all circumstances. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I've told Lincoln, he's, you know, he's almost 16 years old, and we've had conversations. I told him, I said, look, I said, you're getting ready to start driving. He's already got his permit. He's, he's, he's growing up fast. He's, you know, he's wearing my shirts and stealing my belt and ties and things. And, He's, he's growing up to be quite a young man. 
I told him, I said, son, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be 16, you're going to be driving, you're going to be going places that I won't be aware of where you're at. But if you ever get in a situation and you're in trouble, don't be afraid to call me. Don't be worried about where you're at, what you did, and the circumstances you got yourself into. Hey, I was 16 before. I, there was, I was at places I shouldn't have been. I told him, I said, I'll come get you. It doesn't matter. What do you mean, BD? I said, I don't care where you're at, what you're doing, who you're with. If you're in, a tr- if you're in trouble, if you're in a bind, I will come get you because you're my boy. I love you. I'm not going to leave you in trouble. I'm not going to leave you in a situation you can't get out of. Unconditional love. Men and women, love each other. Love each other. If he keeps putting his underwear on the floor and kicking them under the bed, continue to love him. Just drag them out from under there once a week and throw them in the washing machine. Every once in a while you say, I picked seven pair out from underneath the bed. I just want you to know, you know, a little reminder. But when you scream and holler at somebody, it doesn't make them want to do it. They rise up with resentment. You can get more out of me. Let's see, my love language is, is uh, physical touch. If she walks up to me and runs her fingers through the back of my hair and pulls me in for a three-second kiss, I'll burn the house down for her. That's what motivates me. You want to find out what motivates them and act on that. Don't be judgmental all the time to one another. Love each other unconditionally. Well, yeah, we're going to make mistakes. We're, we're going to sit there and watch your lips move, and we're not going to hear a word you say because that's the way we are. We can do that. And when you ask us, what are you thinking, and we say nothing, we ain't lying. We are literally not thinking about anything. Don't get mad when he says nothing. Oh, you was thinking about something. You know, they look over at me and say, what are you watching on your phone? And I say, grass cutting. And I ain't lying. I can sit and watch this guy in Tulsa or somewhere that he, he mows people's up overgrown yards for free. And you guys know what I'm talking about. I can watch that guy all day long. She asks me, what are you doing? Watch, what are you watching over there? I'm watching mow, lawn mowing. You don't have to have to be stimulated. Now, she can, she can watch a movie, help the kids with the homework, and play a game on her phone at the same time, and if you miss something in the movie and get ready to pause it and rewind it, you don't have to. She can tell you. She's got a three-track mind, not a, not a one-track mind. Me, i got a half-track mind on one side, which is where these two wheels are going. But we have learned to live with each other in harmony. Learn your, your spouse. Learn each other. Be sweet to one another. We were driving to Ruston. London fell asleep in the back seat, was going to a football game, watched Lincoln play. She wakes up. She said, man, I slept the whole time. Jamie said, yeah, you slept through me and BD fighting. BD's what they call me for bonus dad, in case you don't know. She said, you slept right through me and BD fighting. She said, yeah, right. She knows we don't fight. We don't argue. Now, I know you all find that hard to believe. Me being who I am. But we don't. We respect each other. Have we ever been upset with each other? Yes. Has she ever said, we need to talk? Yes. And she mostly talks and I mostly listen. But that's how it is. You don't have to scream and holler to accomplish anything. When our children's friends come to our house, they don't want to leave. Because there's harmony in our home. And I'm not bragging about this. It's, it's a God thing. God has allowed us to have peace and harmony in our home. Because that's what we pursue. That's what we want. We don't want chaos. We've both had chaos. We don't want that anymore. You don't have to yell. You don't have to scream to get anything accomplished. Use your words. Use your inside voice. Talk to one another. Get, to, get, a, get a home to the point to where when people come over, they feel at home. They fall asleep on your couch because it's peaceful. 
they enjoy being there because it's it's harmony. We had one lady, one girl came over and, and she was looking around and and she looked at London and she said, "Is y'all's house always this clean?" And I'm like, "Why is yours not?" You know, because a godly home is a clean home. A godly home is full of love. A godly home is full of harmony. Love each other. Respect each other. Follow this order, the biblical order of the family. Christ, husband, wife, children. Protect them. Love them. Comfort them. Teach them. And don't forget that you have children in the back. And I'm running out of time. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for being here this morning. Don't forget your children. God bless you.